Hello, happy DIYers and woodworkers man here with Heartwood Art and today we're going to talk about all the tools that I think are absolutely essential for DIYers and especially when you're setting up shop and some tips for saving money. Hey, if you're enjoying these tips, be sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel and come visit me over at heartwoodart.com and get more details on all these tools. Okay, let's dive in. Safety first. That's the thing you got to know about your shop. Safety first. All the time, every time, right? I like these earmuffs for ear protection. I'll tell you why. You know, they've got the little ear plugs. They're going, those things get lost. Then they've got the ones that go on a string. They fall into whatever you're leaning over. But the thing that I really don't like about the plugs at all is that if they get a little bit of earwax on them, then they collect all the sawdust and whatever in the shop, and then you're sticking that into your ears. No, yeah, I'll stick with the earmuffs. You do what's good for you for those, right? Okay, eye protection. Now, if you're like me and you wear glasses, you may think that's enough. No, because stuff will come in over the top. It'll come in the side, so if you get safety glasses... Make sure that they cover the top and the sides really good, and they protect your expensive frames, you know, and glasses. So, if you don't like safety glasses over your glasses, you may consider goggles as well, because these are going to stay on your head just fine if you don't have enough ear room to get two things back there for two sets of glasses. And they have little breather holes, so they don't fog up so much. All right, the last safety thing is dust mask. You don't, it's not just about protecting your lungs, protecting your sinuses. When you breathe in, all that stuff give you a sinus infection in a hurry, right? This is a little 3M mask, and it'll do just fine. If you're cutting things like pine, softwood, or hardwoods, but listen, if you're cutting hardboard like MDF or even plywood that has a glue-up or particle board or something, no, babies, those things are toxic. You do not want to be breathing that stuff in. So this is adequate for that, but you might want to check into RZ mask. Now, it's a, a bigger mask. It covers more of you, but it, and you keep the mask, but it has little micron filters in it that you throw out, and it's actually going to keep out more than this, and I hear that it doesn't fog up your glasses, you know, as much as these may do. Now, that's all we need for safety, but I want to show you one optional thing that I like. And it's this face shield. I like this very much. When I'm kicking up a lot of sawdust, like using my circular saw on long stretches of plywood, I really like this because it keeps it off. Everything here keeps it from going down in my shirt and stuff. So totally optional, but I want to show it to you because it's something I use and I like. All right, so there we go for our safety stuff. Let's start talking about tools, right? The one tool you're going to use on every project, tape measure. Get a good one. All right, what do I mean by good? Well, you want it wide here. You want it kind of thick and with a good cup in it. And you can hear that when you bend it, right? And the reason for that, it makes it lay flat over long lengths. Now, the other thing that you want to look for is that it takes up good. It's got a good spring in because you don't want to be jerking around, fighting with it, whatever. Now, you might also want to get one that's a bright color so you can find it easily all the time, right? So invest a little money in this, and it'll last you four years. So if you're going to be measuring, what else are you going to be doing? Marking a carpenter's pencil. The reason these things have been around so long is because that lead is practically indestructible. The other thing is it leaves a nice, dark, fat mark. It's super easy for you to see later and find. And it's really easy to sharpen with a utility knife as well. All right. So what else do you need about making marks? Well, you need to draw a straight line. Speed square. I use this on every project, drawing lines. And the great thing about it is it has a little lip on here. So you can put it up against the edge of whatever you're doing and get a perfectly straight perpendicular line uh, for that too. Now, oh, and the other thing you can use it for is a guide for any, a jigsaw or for your circular saw. Straight line to get you going straight. Now, you see I've got two of these, and there's a reason for that. This is great for drawing lines. But when I'm checking square on something as big as this workbench, you need to put as much real estate as you can 
on two sides to check that square. And a big one works great for that. It makes things dead square. Now, you also notice that these are metal because <laughs> these things are practically indestructible uh, indestructible. because you're going to drop them. You're going to step on them. Ask me how I know that. And it's going to hold true because that's the whole point of this. You need it to stay square. Now, the plastic ones are pretty good and they'll be all right for you for a while. But if you can get metal, do that. If you can get a couple of them, do that. Go ahead and get the hard plastic now if you're buying a bunch of tools at once and it's all you can afford. But check it every now and then to make sure that it's still true and square for that. Now, the next tool that all DIYers go bonkers over, Craig Jig, yeah. You know, the pocket hole joinery is the easiest stuff for beginner woodworkers to do, and heck, even not beginners. You know, there are a lot of people who use this professionally in their stuff too. So pocket holes are a must. Now this is the K4, and I like it very much, but it's good for two by fours and one by fours and two by twos, things like that. But when you get up to like a four by four, it's not gonna fit in there. So that's why I like the little K3, because you can take it to the work. You know, for something like a four by four, like these legs for this workbench. So that's great. Now the other thing that you're gonna need uh, for these is a Craig clamp. Okay, and the reason that you need it for this is to clamp it to your bench so that while you're pushing at an angle drilling in, it doesn't walk off across the bench. And then you can see that's what this is for on here, to clamp it down to the bench for you to be able to drill. Now there's two versions of this. This is the short arm one. It's got one that's a long arm. I've got both of them. I use both of them. But maybe try to get these two in a kit. Now. Craig is coming up with new stuff all the time. They've got the K4, the K4 Master, the K5. Whichever one works best for you is fine. Some of them have a dust port so you can hook up your vacuum to it. Some of them have the clamp on the other side. And if you're doing panels, like for every six inches or whatever, and you want to put a panel through there, you don't want to have to reach around the back of a panel to uncork it. You know, it's on this side with it. And so think about that. Uh, to whatever you're going to be using it for. Personally, if I'm going to do panels, I'm going to take this to the panel and do it every six inches or whatever. It's just easier uh, for me. So the thing to look for is maybe try to get this in a kit and then buy other things if you need them. Now, <laughs> one of the things that you're going to see in the kit are the screws. Huh? Don't get those big pack of screws. You will not use even half of those. Here are the two screws that you will use. All the time two and a half inch and one and a quarter inch they come in tubs of 50 and 100 get these you're going to be using those on everything that you do and those other screws and forget about it you're not going to use them right so look for a kit but don't overspend on the kit get the things that are essential and then buy your extras when and if you need them okay the other hand tool that you can't live without Clamps, honey. There is no such thing as too many clamps. Mm -mm. How many ever you've got, you're going to need two more. <laughs> That's just the way it works. You can see these are a couple of different sizes. These are Irwin clamps. I love them. Um, you can see these are a couple of different sizes. And these usually come in packs of two of these and two of these. That's a great place to start. Two packs of those is an even better place to start if you can do it. And what I love about this it has a quick release so it immediately comes ungripped you know from whatever you're clamping that's what this little quick release does but the other thing is one-handed clamping and if you're in the shop by yourself you gotta have that so you can hold something together while you're clamping it yes they're Irwin quick grip clamps so we love those and no such thing it's too many clamps okay that's all of the hand tools. Let's get into the power tools that you're going to need. If you're working with wood, you're going to need a circular saw. You've got to have some way to cut it, right? Now, there are, these come in two flavors. They're in two sizes. This is a little five and a half. I love it. It's easy for me to handle. I use it for cutting plywood. It's going to be good up to about a two by four thickness. That's about as far as that's going to go. The next one up is seven and a quarter. Now, the thing about a seven and a quarter is there are lots of blades for them. 
that you can get just about anywhere. Any kind of tooth that you need or made of anything that you need. And for the five and a half, there are blades, extra blades for them of different kinds, but you may not be able to get them in your hardware store. You may need to get them online. But I love it because it's so light and I use it primarily just to cut plywood. So you really need to look at what are you going to be cutting. And if it's over a two by four, like a four by four leg, a five and a half can't do a four by four leg. You'll have to go to seven and a quarter, but they're heavier, you know, for that. So look at what you're going to get and what you need. The other tool that's indispensable, drills. Got to have drills, right? And I always like having two of them. Why? Because you're, you'd be switching out bits all the time. Now, uh, case in point is the Craig G. It has a specific drill bit for drilling these holes, and then it has a specific bit for driving the screws. It's a square bit, okay? And so you don't want to have to change that out constantly, right? Well, you're not going to be making the holes and screwing them in at the same time, but still, you don't want to be changing those out. Or if you're drilling pilot holes and then driving the screws, same thing. You've got a regular drill bit and then maybe a Phillips driver or a star head driver if you're using construction screws. So two drills is a good thing. Now again, get these in a combo set if you can, but be very careful when you do that. Watch for the size of the saw in that combo. And then if the combo looks like it has two drills, make sure that one of them is not a drill and an impact driver instead. Now I love my impact driver. But if I were just buying tools today and I had to make a choice, I'd rather have two drills than a drill and an impact driver, okay? You can't really substitute an impact driver for a drill. So look at your combos here. It's going to save you money. Now the other thing to look at in the combos is the batteries that come with it. Now I'm going to show you these two here. All right, this is the kind of battery that's probably going to come with everything. It's just their standard, it doesn't matter what the manufacturer is, it's a standard battery. And it will almost always come with one less battery than they have tools or one less charger. I mean, it's a price point kind of a thing. So if you have to buy a battery, buy a 4AH for your saw. It's going to have more power and it's going to last longer. If you're chopping through stuff like long cuts on plywood, you're going to want this battery. Now this will work. But this really revs up that motor for that. Now, the other thing is you can look at with these combos. You can get tools all by themselves without batteries. So if your combo doesn't have everything that you want, maybe one less drill, you can get just the drill. Now, you may have to get it online. Sometimes the box stores don't have every combo or everything there is. Be sure you check online for those. All right. If you're going to have drills... You gotta have drill bits. Now don't go crazy on these things. There's those cases that have every kind of bit that you can think of. You will never use even half, probably not even a quarter of what's in those kits. This will do you just fine for drill bits. I promise you. <laughs> just get a little standard set of bits. All right, now don't go too cheap on this. This is high-speed steel drill bit set. Do this or carbide because this stuff heats up as it goes through and it's just going to lose its bite. It's going to lose its sharpness. Make sure you get some bits that are going to stay sharp. The other thing that you're going to want to get are maybe a few extra bits. Now, I think this one comes with, not all of them do, but this one comes with a little bit in it for a straight and a Phillips driver. And these, this is great. It's short. It's great for things around the house. Not so good necessarily in a wood shop. So, but you may want to get a longer one of these. And, you know, probably about this long, four or five inch long one for that. Okay, and then maybe uh, get you a star bit if you're going to be driving construction screws. And then if you're using a K4, go ahead and get another square bit because those things round out. Trust me, I know, everybody that uses them, they'll round out. So, just a few bits that you need. Maybe a good countersink. And that's all you need. You don't need the great big kits. And if you get good ones, they're going to last you for a very, very long time. Right? So I believe, oh, one more that we've got. Hand tools. So you need to do your homework on this. This is a palm sender. It's an old Makita. I love it. I've had it for years. 
if you spend a little money, it's going to last you a long time, right? I love my Makita. Now, you're going to want to look at the difference in a palm sander and an orbital sander. Because sometimes if you're not skilled with an orbital sander, you'll do sand down a nice piece of something. And when you go to put a finish on it, you'll see all these swirling marks, right? Yee. Yeah. Okay, so you don't want that. But if you do a lot of buffing, say you put a nice polyurethane on it and you need to buff, or you work with epoxy, you know, that river runs through it kind of a thing, then nothing beats an orbital sander for buffing. So do your homework, see what you're going to be using a sander on, and get the right kind for you. Okay, that's all of our tools, and I'm going to go to another part of my shop and show you another tool that I think is absolutely essential for DIY woodworkers. Okay, this is the other tool that I think is absolutely indispensable for woodworking. It's a miter saw, not just any miter saw. This is a compound sliding miter saw. It's a Makita 10 inch, and it can cut 12 inch boards with a lot of these 10 inch ones can't do that. They can't cut more than a 10 inch or so board, 10 or 11 inches. This one can cut 12. So if you're working with shelving, it works for that too. Why compound miter saw? Because one thing, it slides and then it bevels as well. So I can do any cut in the world on here. Now listen, about miter saws, if you can't afford something like this, save up. Just wait. Don't get a cheap miter saw because the whole point of this is that it cuts true. And this one is a breeze to set up for squaring it. You get these cheap ones? Nah. The other thing is you're going to get a yicky blade in some of the cheaper ones too. The first thing you got to do is spend another 30, 40, 50 bucks at least getting a decent blade for it. Things will wobble. It won't cut true. It's going to be hard to keep square. You're just throwing your money away, I think, on a cheaper saw. So if you need to wait on this, then wait. Save up and get yourself a really good miter saw. Now, you may not need the bevels, but a slider will let you cut so much more stuff. And then you can build something like this, this miter saw station for it, and everything is dead even and square and you'll love making things with it. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed these tips on all the tools that I think are essential for DIY woodworkers and tips on saving a little bit of money. And if you've enjoyed this, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and come on over and visit me at heartwoodart.com. Get more details on these tools and shop build plants like things like this workbench and that miter saw station. And I'll see you in the shop.